So there's been a lot of talk lately about Jason Day and the struggles that he's had with his back injuries. Now, first thing we need to understand, this is a tour player who obviously has a life on the side. His importance is getting healthy. Uh, so we should not be criticizing the fact that he had to withdraw or be, you know, saying anything insulting on the internet. I read some unfortunate comments about him and his golf swing. Um, and the reality is, you know, he is a human being and he is struggling right now. So we should uh, leave him to deal with, with his back pain. But I want to talk a little bit about the movement pattern he has and why it creates a lot of pressure on the, on the lower end of the back. Now, the reality is the golf swing will always create some form of pressure, right? I mean, it's kind of an unnatural movement. It's very fast uh, for the most part. Obviously, we're torquing our body and our spine in a lot of different places. Um, so to say that every golfer can get rid of that risk forever is impossible. But obviously, we could limit the damage as much as we can. Now, what we're seeing from Jason's pattern is that he has very level hips in the backswing, meaning because he keeps his trail knee flexed on the way back, what ends up happening is he's creating a lot of restrictions. So if I keep both knees bent here and I try to create a lot of rotation, there's a couple of problems that are going to come from this. First of all, as soon as you keep the trail leg flexed, you are restricting this hip from opening up into a deeper position because it puts a lot of pressure on the quads of the hamstrings. And our body is never going to do any sort of movement that's going to create injury to itself, right? As soon as we start to feel any level of pressure or pain, we're not going to keep going into that because it hurts. So what ends up happening is we just end up limiting the damage by limiting the rotation. So when you have very flexed knees on both sides, not only are you creating problems to the tilting pattern of the body, but you are creating restrictions to how much you can open up. Now, when you create that restriction, obviously we can't get our hand path behind us anymore without shoving our arms back. Because everything moves together, right? So when I open up my body, my hands want to move deeper. If I don't open up my body, my hands can't go back unless I really force them there. So naturally speaking, when you restrict the hip turn and your hips get very level and this back leg stays very flexed, it puts a lot of pressure on the body so you don't end up turning anymore and the hands just shoot straight up. So at the top of his backswing, we not only see a very restricted hip turn, but his hand path can't get remotely deep enough anymore. Now, when you're at the top here, there's a lot of compensations you need to make to make sure that you hit the ball well, right? So for starters, if you try rotating in the downswing, your hand path is going to get way too far out in front of your body because you had no depth at the top to begin with. But then as a combination to that, what ends up happening now is any level of lateral motion towards the target is going to get the lead side of your body way too high too quick. The reason being because we didn't create enough inclinations towards the ground in the backswing. Right, So when the hips are very level, obviously your lead hip now on the left side for me as a right-handed player is too high in the backswing. Now, too high doesn't necessarily have to mean super elevated. Even just being level is too high. So we need to create more inclinations down to the ground through a bigger change in knee flex and some side bend on the lead side. So that's going to create these tilting patterns where the left side of my body now is pointing to the floor. Right Now, in his case, what ends up happening is he's very restricted, obviously, with the knees. The arms shoot up. Now, he can't rotate because his hands are going to get too far out in front of him. So what he has to do is he has to slide towards the target because that actually drops the hands, right? So just like rotation will move the hand path in or out, adding tilting patterns back or forward will move the hand path up or down. So when I tilt away from the target, so that essentially means I'm doing a lot of this guy here, that will drop my hand path downwards, right? Now, for a case like his, he doesn't have much depth at the top. He's got to find a way to keep the arms somewhat in. His option at that point in time, once he has that restrictions in the elevated arms, is to slide towards the target and then start to create that tilting pattern away from the target. So now he's finding a way to make the swing work, but he's doing so by putting a ton of pressure on his back. Because when you have that restriction and you have to slide now and shallow the club by doing a lot of the success of side bending away from the target, yes, your hand path drops, so you're getting the club into a functional spot right? But what's happening is you're sacrificing your pivot and you're putting a ton of pressure on the lower back when you do this. So this is obviously a pattern that we come across quite often. So if I was Jason, really plain and simple, what I would get him to do is I would get him to lose a lot more flex on the trail side of his body. Uh, so create a lot more extension on the right side of his body. So actually straighten out the knee joint. You don't have to lock the knee joint because that's a problem, but you certainly want to straighten it as much as you can without locking it. And that will allow him and free him up to get into a deeper hip turn. The deeper hip turn will influence the hand path, obviously a little more behind his body naturally through the rotation. So he won't have to like feel like he shoves them there. And at the same time, what's gonna happen when he does this is he's creating a proper tilting pattern to his lower body. So even if he slides a little bit towards the target and creates some tilting away from it, he's starting from a more inclined position. So the slide and the tilt 
is now going to get him a little bit level, right? Whereas when you're already level and you slide and you tilt, now you're leaning back. So think about it. If you have no inclination to the lower body, meaning your hips are too much at the same height, if you slide towards the target and add any level of side bending, your lead side is already above the trail side now. You're going to start to fall back and get caught behind with a lot of pressure on the back. But if we create, obviously, a little more straightening to the trail leg, a little more rotation to influence the hand path deeper, we create some better tilting patterns here. Even if you slide and create some sort of side bend, you're a little bit more centered than you were before. So the starting position of where you are on the top is going to be extremely important in dictating what your pivot is going to look like in the downswing. Yes, we can talk about the downswing and he swings fast and aggressive and I'm hearing all these terms. It has nothing to do with him swinging fast. It has everything to do with the, with the fact that he's have, he has a very poor tilting pattern to his lower body in the backswing, which is creating a restriction to his hand path. And that restriction to his hand path is forcing him to compensate on the way down by sliding and tilting back to get control of the hands and club. And that's what's putting all the pressure on his lower body um, and on the back. So if he can straighten out this trail leg a little bit, create a deeper hip turn, get the hand path a little more around him, now he has all the freedom in the world to retain those tilts and turn, right? And his hands won't end up in no man's land way out in front of him. But when you have restrictions here and your hands are way up, you can't turn because your hand path is dead. So you have to slide and tilt back, which in that case makes the hands and the club work. But now your back is taking all the pressure. So this is something that I unfortunately come across very often. And I just want to reiterate his pattern and his issues stem much more from a backswing pattern of how he's loading and tilting than what he's doing on the way down in terms of speed. It has nothing to do with that.